Good morning folks. This is the start of a, another project. This is 1989 Yamaha VMAX. It's uh, pretty trash. The guy painted the whole thing with something that's starting to flake off here. These are the 83 millimeter forks. I'm gonna I'm gonna change those to uh, 96. I've got the forks and the brakes. These are single piston calipers. I said it didn't run. It worked when they got it. I bought it from a dealer. Missing some pieces on the bottom exhaust. It does turn on. The uh, starter's not turning. I barely hear the fuel pump click, so somebody took a screwdriver to this lock. Basically, I gotta get the <clears throat> tank and everything off and see what I got for battery. But, uh, Anyway, next project. I got a set of headers here for it. The back pipes are all right. They look pretty good. It's got some dents. And uh, I don't know what this paint is. But I got a lot of cleaning to do. First thing is just to see if this motor is going to even fire up. Now remove the coil bracket. It's got some really bad wiring. You can just see the tape pulled off. I'm not sure where that is. What it is. But it's set up for a battery tender. So I plug one in. And uh, looks like my Yeah, all the computer cycling. Still not uh, not doing anything yet. Battery's still dead though. I've got another battery. First, I'm just gonna jump it and see if the starter engages. I got a feeling it's just bad wires. We'll find out. Well, I made sure I got good battery. What I'm going to do here is jump this. You can hear it just turning. There's a, a one way clutch inside of there. Uh, I have a feeling that it's the clutch that is bad and not the not the starter itself. So anyway, I gotta drain the oil, pull that off, and we'll see what happens replacing the starter. Pull the rotor off or the cover off of the rotor, and this fell out. So it's pretty obvious what happened. This gear that engages the motor is broken off. And this stuff here looks to be in pretty good shape. Looks like there's a some kind of a shaft that goes here into the case.
and nothing fell out. That's oh, here it is. Shaft is still in the case. Well, the shaft looks good. I don't know if the motor's froze up or not. But it definitely is leaking oil. These bolts were all loose. Somebody's taken it off before. So that's what they did. They found that broken starter gear and quit. Well, it looks like the motor was frozen up. But I used a couple double wrenches here. And I was able to break it loose. So it's turning over. I was afraid there for a minute. They said it did run. So now I'm just going to pull the spark plugs and squirt a little WD 40 down in these cylinders. Uh, I know that the motor will turn over, then I have to get a gasket. Yeah, this is really bad. It's all been patched together and not the right glue. It obviously was leaking oil. Don't know why they had it apart. But uh, the main thing is uh, the motor turns over. Not so good. That's on compression there. But uh, I'll take out these plugs and put some goop in it, and that should help. Here's a little more. I pulled this off. Looks like it was silicone together and leaking. Uh, dripped a little oil out. Not much but it's got some uh, rust and corrosion there and I'm gonna this is just a rag wipe it yeah it looks like it's not bad at all it's coming off with of the rag so anyway I'm sure a lot of metal inside there looks similar. But I'm going to pull both these covers and uh, somebody painted them. I don't know why they painted them, but they didn't do a very good job. Anyway, I'm going to use some paint stripper, strip these. Uh, the paint's coming off pretty easy here. It's just flaking. I'll try to get it off without scratching up the chrome. Yeah, it's coming off real easy on these screws here. Somebody just painted over the top of everything. Anyway, I get that all cleaned up. And, uh, Next, I'm going to try to take a look at these carbs and see what they look like. But I'm just going to pull everything that I know needs to be stripped, like the side covers and miscellaneous stuff here. At least uh, once it's stripped, I can tell what color I got and uh, try to reverse some of the idiot painting job on this thing trying a little paint stripper on it see what happens here's the next little step I got the air cleaner box off and I got the uh, fuel hose here loose and the gas cap was gone 
so I just took a, a drill and drilled out the, the pins in it so that opened up looks like somebody butchered the, the side lock too and had about a third of a tank of gas in it I think what happened is they probably lost the keys uh, and once they did that they couldn't put gas in it I'm not sure what happened but somehow and it all quit running and I'm just gonna pull this clamp off of here and pump this gas out of this tank well looks a little better after I tried to clean it with paint stripper but uh, where there's still paint on it it's not really doing nothing it might have loosened it a little I'll see what happens and I'll try to hit it with that brush again and see what happens well I used some uh, aircraft paint stripper on it <laughs> looks a lot better I'm just trying to get the the main stuff off of it uh, looks pretty good I'll still have to repaint that motor but uh, I was able to save most of the paint on it and clean it up looks good on this side now well, here's kind of the results after first coat this only had one coat on it so it pretty much came off. It looked like the motorcycle might have been red. The rest of these things got many, many coats on them. So I scraped them off. I'll put another coat of liquid on it and see how it works. Next round helped even more. This one cover went to the aluminum. This one's got it showing in a couple places. Apparently that thing was cracked. They've got a lot of bondo on it right here. But it's going to aluminum in a couple other places. The tank's kind of cleaning up. I'll let it set a minute. And I got the uh, shifter and everything all cleaned up. Foot peg from all the black paint on it. It'll take a while on these. what that other cover looks like. These things are kind of expensive to try to buy new. Probably 100-150 bucks each. So I may just patch it up and uh, paint it. I don't know. I won't really know anything until I get them all stripped. And then I'll decide what to do after that. Next step I got some gears here and a gasket I'm gonna hook the starter up and uh, clean this thing up good and put it all back together here's the gears back I hit them with white lithium grease well let's see this thing's gonna turns it over pretty good I've got some plugs in there that are just barely screwed in so I'd have a little compression but uh, looks like it's gonna work I'm just gonna keep popping off until I get it uh, all bolted down good and a cover on it so at least I know it works. And I'm turning it over. That one stuck spot might be part of the where it was froze up to. I probably need to squirt some more oil or something in there and 
dry it some more. I'll do that after I get this case on and cleaned up. I think I'm just going to use gas and try to clean that out and get the rest of the old gasket off. I put that case back on for right now and just put a couple bolts in it. Squirted some more oil in the cylinders. Turning over good. I don't think it's got any. Don't think it's got any oil in it. But I think what I'm going to do is just stick the spark plugs in so they have a little compression. Put the choke on and see if I can suck a little bit of that gas down through into the cylinders too. All right, I put the. Uh, Spark plugs, a couple threads in. I wanna. Where's the choke? Oh, yeah, it's over here. Somewhere on the side. I forget where it's at. There it is. Okay, there's full choke. Let's see what I can do here. the coils unhooked I'll just check one to see if it's even sparking well I put the plugs back in it chokes on it's got some gas in it and see if it starts I'll be damned Gonna fire right up. Looks like I got a lot of exhaust leaks. But even with that old gas plug, they're not even screwed in, just a couple threads. Not even gas in the cylinders. We're gonna try to fire right up. Well, here's the cover all cleaned up. Ready to go back in. Here's a little tip for you. I worked on Japanese and British bikes for five or six years in a shop. Now stuff we got was we got it from Honda I think it was called Honda line and uh, you can probably find this stuff here this is three bond gray gasket anyway this stuff works super good especially works on these these uh, rubber connectors that go into your uh, alternator and stator and points trigger and all this other stuff this one here didn't come out so it looks like it's probably pretty good and it don't look like it was leaking but I'll have to do this one real good here and uh, then I'll put the gasket on the trick with this stuff is put it on nice even and light torque everything down and don't move it till the next day and you never have a leak with this stuff so we'll just see what happens yeah, this looks like the original stuff. I'm trying to hold the camera here and do this with one hand. But you want to get it all the way around. And then press this into your into your casing like such. And take your gasket stuff and just go around and put a thin even coat, put a little more on the 
places like this where we got a little piece of rubber but uh, I've got a little spout for this I probably should be using it but uh, I find that uh, your finger works perfectly good you just make sure that it's all covered well I'll go ahead and oil this up or gasket it up put the gasket on that's what happens there you go you just put the gasket on line it up good and the next thing you do and again you want to make sure that your case is perfectly clean I cleaned this one with uh, gasoline and I'm just gonna put a just a thin bead here all the way around the where the gasket goes yeah, circle your any kind of dowel pins you got and uh, looks like I got a little piece of there we go gasket and I have to get that oil off of there I thought it was clean but uh, it should be enough See yeah, there it's hitting a little bit of that gasoline that's left. You can see it don't want to stick to oil or gasoline at all. So you just have to degrease it as well as you can. Well that's it. And just kind of smooth it out on the surface here with my finger this thing had a lot of silicone in it that's probably one of the worst things you can put on a motor especially a, a Japanese aluminum motor because the oil passage are so small not like a car big stuff and uh, you wind up getting a uh, getting silicone all over in your motor and then plug stuff up anyway this stuff here Yamaha bought I think to call it this is three bond gray gasket maker and if you use this stuff I guarantee you won't be taking the motor apart fixing the oil leak well I was having so much fun there my gaskets that I forgot I needed to paint this thing so I shot a coat of primer on it and uh, get some dupla color enamel. Works pretty good. Got a high gloss. I also need to do this chain cover here. It shouldn't be too hard. I'll do that while the other is drying. Now there it is. Freshly painted. All the bolts in it. <coughs> good gasket sealer. Guarantee there'd be no leaks out of that. I still don't have a gasket for that thing. So I can't do much to it except paint it. I got a starter gear here left. I'll put that on eBay. But it looks pretty good. And this paint's a, I got a little run there on top. So that's why I just squirted some more on it. I don't know, maybe it'll... Uh, Maybe the run will come out, maybe it won't. Looks pretty bad from here. But if it don't, I'll just sand it down a little bit. Repaint that part. The main thing is I got it on good. The paint looks good. And uh, the motor's starting to look more like a VMAX. Here's another little step. I got some uh, Yamaha rotors off of 2006. It's kind of hard to tell like that, but they're a lot bigger. And I got this uh, thing here I'll show you. Here's a set of front forks. They didn't, didn't pack them very well. 
but uh, I think this off uh, an 03 is 1.7 inches and these forks here are 1.575 see so that's a uh, I don't know what that is, millimeters, 40 millimeters is these, and these are 43 millimeters. So, it's a quite a bit bigger shock, fork tube, should make it a lot stiffer. Let's see if I can pull them out here and get a comparison. So there is a comparison. Uh, plus these tubes here have a you can't really see it on the top. There's a air balancing chamber that goes in there. And this one don't have it. Uh, I think every money everything else is pretty much the same. But these are much heavier uh, newer fork tubes and I already had one of these things I know they're really fast and that front end is not the best in the world so before I even fool with it I might go ride it a little bit but then I'm gonna put on this uh, big forks and big brakes I've got a set of the right calipers and everything so I'll upgrade the steering on this to late model. Well, I got it started. Kind of burn out what fuel I had in it. Anyway, motor started. Now we just press on from here. One more step in the saga. I fired this up yesterday and ran it until the thermostat turned on. It was rattling and clanking and popping through the carburetors. So today I got it to where it idled pretty good. I don't hear any bad engine noise in it. <coughs> but I'm going to have to clean these carburetors. Anyway, I got to take these two throttle cables apart here. I think I can just loosen this one up and then pull it off of the bottom and then turn it out. These are actually really easy to get loose. So far I only just got four screws loose.